Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's joint summer worship service between First and South Church. We also welcome those who are watching on live stream, as well as for those who are watching this recording at a later date. My name is Chris Saunders. I'm a deacon here at First Church. I'm also here with Linda Sweeto, deacon from South Congregational Church. Please join us for this opening video. Following the season of Easter and the celebration of Pentecost, the church moves into a season we call ordinary time. The color for ordinary time is green. What does the color green mean or call to mind? Growth, gardens, shady forests, summer breezes, abundance, activity, moving ahead. We meet God in ordinary time during morning coffee or in familiar voices, noonday heat, while in a meeting or on a sunset walk. Worship is our daily bread, our spiritual sustenance, our connection with abundant life now and the eternal life to come. Let us turn our hearts toward God. There are many different stories of faith and tales of trust. The Bible is full of them. We are full of them. Some are dramatic, some are ordinary. Some make us anxious with their seemingly impossible demands. Some comfort and encourage us. They're all just stories. They help us understand our lives, yet they are not our lives. Our lives are more than just the stories we tell about ourselves. They are more than just the stories other tell, others tell about us because the author of life isn't finished with us. God says, for surely I know the plans I have for you, the plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope.
Thank you, Laura. We do not have a children's moment this morning, so we're going to lead right into our scripture. And I will also mention that if you have any prayers or joys and concerns, we have these cards in the pew. Um, we'll be picking those up during the special music um, after Lisa's uh, story of faith today. Our scripture reading is a letter to the Hebrews from St. Paul. It examines examples of faith from our Old Testament ancestors. It's chapter 11, verses 1 through 13a, and it's from the Inclusive Bible. Faith is a reality that is hoped for. Faith is the proof of all that is unseen. Because of faith, our ancestors were approved by God. By faith, we understand that the world was created by the world from God, and what is visible came into being through the invisible. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice to God than Cain, and for that was declared to be just. God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken up and didn't have to experience death. He was seen no more because God took him. Even before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to God must believe that God exists rewarding those who earnestly seek the divine glory. By faith, Noah, warned about things not yet seen, revered God and built an ark in order to save his household. By faith, Noah condemned the world and inherited the justice which comes through faith. By faith, Sarah and Abraham obeyed when they were called and went off to the place they were to receive as a heritage. They went forth, moreover, not knowing where they were going. By faith, Sarah and Abraham lived in the promised land as resident aliens, dwelling in tents with their children and grandchildren, who were heirs of the same promise. For they were looking forward to the city with foundations, whose designer and maker is God. By faith, Sarah received the ability to conceive, even though she was past childbearing age, for she thought that the one who had made the promise was worthy of the trust. As a result of this faith, there came forth from one woman and one man, themselves as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. All of them died in faith, they didn't obtain what had been promised, but saw and welcomed it from afar. Thus ends today's reading. The next part of our worship series, we continue with stories of faith, tales, and trust. Today we're fortunate to have Lisa Reinhardt here to share those words of wisdom um, also, if you had a chance, um, Lisa also wrote a fine piece in the first edition regarding challenging conversations. So if you have not seen that yet, please take a look at that. Lisa? Oh, she's on TV. My name is Lisa. I am a current member of the First Congregational Church of Granby. I was asked to share my journey of faith with you. October 1964, May 1979, June 1991, January 1993, November 1995, September 1996, and September 1997. These months and years helped frame out my first, first church timeline and history. In 1964, my parents were married in the sanctuary of the First Congregational Church of Granby. In 1979, the Reverend Ralph Cook confirmed me as a 14-year-old. As a young adult in my 20s, my faith journey was important 
and I rediscovered that First Church needed to be part of that journey again. In June 1991, Reverend George Haskins performed our wedding ceremony in the sanctuary. I was actually one of the first brides to walk down a side aisle after the renovation. In January 1993, our infant daughter Chelsea was baptized in the sanctuary. In 1995, our family formally joined First Congregational Church in the sanctuary. In September 1996, I vaguely remember sitting in the first pew of the sanctuary during my mother's funeral service. She was 49 when she died, and I was numb, but the church community helped me heal. In September 1997, we rejoiced in another baptism in the sacred space of the sanctuary when our son Seth was baptized on Homecoming Sunday. In December 1997, Seth played baby Jesus in the Christmas pageant. We were proud parents watching him on the altar. In 1999, Chelsea weeded the church garden all by herself and planted new flowers. Chelsea and Seth both stood at the pulpit to deliver their confirmation speeches to a welcoming and supportive community. Both Chelsea and Seth grew as individuals by attending many mission trips far from home. In 2004, I helped donate some of my grandmother's money to buy new kitchen equipment so our kitchen could be improved to serve our community better. Less formal occasions have included our dog Fenway being involved in blessing of the animals, events, feeling safe and secure at Women's Spirituality group, Book Group, where I had to share that my marriage of 26 years was ending. Making friends and being welcomed into friends' homes is another great aspect of being part of a church community like First Church. I've been strengthened by the power of our collective prayer. I've been moved to tears by a sermon or a song. A moment of peace for me has been when the sunlight hits my shoulders in my familiar pew. The energy of voices praising God in the song of hallelujah has been so pivotal in my faith journey. The music that we have shared, hymn sings, and singing your favorite hymn brings such joy to me. The glow of the candles on Christmas complemented by the harmony of the voices singing Silent Night. We chose our home close to First Church so we could walk to church and we could be involved, especially walking there and back on Christmas Eve with friends. Life moments like being supported by a minister during difficult times, growth opportunities when serving others through my work as a Sunday school teacher, mission trip leader, Christian Ed Committee Chair, Deacon and Head Deacon. February 14th, 2021. This is a new date in my first church timeline. It is the date where members of both First and South Congregational Churches voted to collaborate to start our journey together. The journey of two communities of faith with individuals like me, with special dates, special moments, life-changing memories, and a rich history with their own church. The history of our two churches has been made by people. We are now writing a new history together. As a leader in our church and a member of Gucci, I need to be open and ready for change. As a person, it's a continual process to be ready for change, to be open to the possibility that my sanctuary, literally and figuratively, may be different in the near future. I may not feel the sun on my shoulders in my familiar pew. I may not hear the echoes of voices in Cook Hall. Silent night might be heard in a new place. My work as a lay leader may be done with new faces and new friends in a new space. The reason I was asked by Pastor Todd to speak today was because a month or so ago, I told him 
how excited I was about the future. And I am proud of the work we are all doing. In fact, this was one of the most important times in my history with First Church. We need to be honoring the past, but also looking to the future. We want others to have those special dates, those special moments. Together, we can provide a vibrant, welcoming, and beautiful community. I look forward to those new dates. I originally was going to do this message from the Sanctuary of First Church because this is where I feel safe, welcome, and loved. It is a building and space I cherish. I realized my message could be from anywhere. I know it is not the wood or the lights that love me or make me feel welcome. It's not the pews or altar that make the moments. It is the people and the people within the church community that do that. As you think of your special dates, special moments, the things that make your faith journey special, think of those that will join us, come after us, and those who will continue to provide a faith community open to all, safe, comfortable, meaningful, and special. Continue to share your stories, your dates, cherish the things that make South or First Church special. Continue to get to know who is involved in this process, this collaborative journey. There will be sorrow, doubt, and fear. There will be joy, celebration, and peace. I am honored to be part of this time in our history. Thank you. That's tremendous insight. We appreciate it. At this time, if you have any joys or concerns that you'd like to share, you can fill out one of the cards in the pews and um, we'll be by to collect those. Um, Marilyn Tracy has some music to offer for us. Good morning. Um, I have to say a few words about such a wonderful man. Uh, Felix Mendelssohn was the composer of the piece that I'm going to play. Um, he wrote this in 1836. I looked up information about the piece, but I couldn't find anything specific. He was a prolific writer of music. Um, coincidentally, this piece, two-page piece, is called Faith. It's opus 102, number six.
Thank you for that, Marilyn. Please join me in prayer for our prayers for the people. Dear God, we are grateful for our worship together this morning. We thank you for all of the blessings you have stowed, bestowed upon us and ask that you continue to hold us up in your grace and guide us on our journey forward. We pray for those who are insecure in food, shelter, health, and prosperity, and for those who fear for their lives and their family's safety. May they encounter hope and peace. We ask for your help as we continue to make progress in the battle against the deadly virus. Help us to become better stewards of this earth and better disciples towards world peace. We pray with the people of Haiti for future peace and stability. We pray for those impacted by weather and climate-related events. We ask that you raise up those who have recently left their time on Earth and for comfort to their families. We pray for the people of the condo collapse in Florida. For my friend John, who lost his battle with ALS. For my mother's cousin Mary, who died this past week. And for Don S. and his family. We ask you to provide strength, hope, and healing for those suffering from illness or needing your intercession. We remember Andy. We remember Ted. All this we ask of you as we pray to you with these words that Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. For our announcements this morning, would please uh, call your attention for those uh, in worship with us uh, to the television screen for a quick review of our announcements.
We are grounded in love. God calls us to love others. We're inspired to serve. May our witness inspire others to join us in building a world of peace, justice, and provision for all.